This paper was presented at the JCT Traffic Signal Symposium 2023 in Nottingham, thanks to the support of AGD Systems, Inrix, Message Maker Displays, PTV Group, Simplify Systems, Smart Micro UK, and TRL Software. Hello, so like we just said, my name is Chris Small, TFGN, and this is my presentation, Traffic Control in Greater Manchester, where we are and where we go next. Uh, so abstract, this is what my presentation is about. It gives an overview of traffic control systems in Greater Manchester, how they are managed and how Greater Manchester is working to improve their operation. It explores Greater Manchester's ambitions, future plans and how traffic control systems will develop in line with changing policies. The presentation will look at traffic control on a network level, not focusing on individual junctions and will, give, and will present a long-term vision of the future of traffic control in Greater Manchester. So the background of Greater Manchester, uh, it's predominantly urban with a large regional centre surrounded by suburbs and a number of towns and villages. It has a population of 2.8 million people spread across 10 local authorities. Uh, 6.1 million trips are made each day by Greater Manchester residents, with 2.4 million of these being by public transport or active travel. And um, a bit about governance as it relates to transport. Uh, the Greater Manchester Combined Authority, GMCA, uh, comprises the 10 local authorities and the elected mayor and is responsible for a range of functions including transport. Uh, the GMCA, alongside the Greater Manchester Transport Committee that's now been renamed the B Network Committee, sets transport policies that are then implemented by TFGM. So the future of Greater Manchester. This is a time of change in Greater Manchester. There's a growing population and economy, especially in the regional centre. <laughs> The structures that govern the region are also changing, with powers and funding being devolved from central government. The 2040 transport strategy has been developed and sets out the long-term aspirations. It outlines an evidence-based long-term vision for the right mix of transport modes on the network and targets 50% of trips. I've just realised I've not been pressing my thing, have I? So, there you go. That was the abstract that I read you. That was the background. And this is where we are now. So, where I was was the, the 2040 strategy has been developed and sets out the, the long-term aspirations. It identifies an evidence-based long-term vision for the right mix of transport modes on the network and targets 50% of trips across Greater Manchester being by public transport or active travel. This figure then rises to 90% for trips into the city centre. Key to the 2040 strategy is a B network which will create a, a world-class integrated transport network that combines tram, bus and rail with the UK's largest cycling and walking network. A major component of the B network is the re-regulation of bus services, with services being planned and overseen by TFGM. Trans 1 begins in just over a week's time in Bolton, Wigan and parts of Manchester, Salford and Bury. By 2025, TFGM will be running buses across the whole of GM. Uh, the changes to where people live, work, where people live and work alongside changes to policies and the operation of transport services will fundamentally alter how journeys are made across Greater Manchester. The management of the traffic signal network will therefore have to support the changes and meet the challenges. So, I'll remember this time. So, the history of Greater Manchester traffic signals, to give a bit of the background. GM's traffic signal network has grown and developed over time, adapting to changing travel patterns, policies and technologies. In 1928, the first automatic traffic signals were installed at the junction of Cross Street and Market Street in Manchester City Centre, and the photo shows today's configuration as a junction. Um, and then in the 1970s, the UTC system was created to improve traffic flows and reporting of faults. 700 of the, of the then 1100 signals were added, with the remaining connected to the re remote monitoring system, RMS, and 20 CCTV cameras were also purchased. This combined system allowed the real-time monitoring of traffic conditions and, when required, live updates to the signal timings. The 1990s then saw Greater Manchester introduced an adaptive traffic control with the first mover site um, along the East Lanks Road in Wigan and then the first scoop region was also installed in Wigan, this time in the town centre, and was followed by regions in Hazel Grove and Farnworth. And since its earliest days, the way the traffic signal has been managed has changed to reflect the policies and priorities of the time, whilst making use of the latest technologies. These priorities have shifted from the movement of, motor of motorised vehicles to an approach which considers all road users and better allows for, and in some instances, prioritises public transport and pedestrians. So, so 
uh, an overview of today's traffic signal network. A set of protocols delegates responsibility for traffic signals from the 10 local authorities to GMCA and then the work to install, maintain and manage the signals is discharged to TFGM, taking account of GMCA's and the local authorities' strategies and objectives. And then to give an idea of the scale of today's network and the systems that the signals are connected to, there are approximately 2,500 sites, 1,400 of which are junctions and 1,100 of which are crossings. And all sites are monitored remotely with approximately half controlled by the UTC system. The other half are monitored by RMS or Stratos systems. 60 national highway sites are managed on their behalf by TFGM and almost 1,100 sites have SKU and over 300 mover. Um, 118 sites include control of Metrolink trams and provide full priority and a further 117 SKU control sites have late running bus priority installed. Uh, communications. So reliable comms are an integral part of any traffic control system but there are large ongoing revenue costs. Whether a site is connected to UTC or RMS or Stratos is largely dependent on whether the signals need to coordinate with adjacent sites. If they do, they will be added to UTC, but this incurs a greater cost due to the requirement of, for an in, uninterrupted connection. Most sites, UTC sites, are, connect, are connected by ADSL, with the remainder connected by 4G, fibre provided for CCTV, or shared fibre to other TFGM assets. Sites connected to Stratos or RMS are generally isolated sites with no adjacent signals. As these systems monitor for faults and do not control the signals, they can utilise dial-up communications. Um, over 250 sites are connected to Stratos by 4G, with around 800 connected to RMS by GSM or PGSN. And as RMS and its comms will be decommissioned in the coming years, alternatives have been put in place to ensure that the sites stay connected to one of the systems. So, day-to-day -day operation. Uh, this is an overview of some of the ways the operation of the traffic signals is carried out in accordance with current policies. Um, engineers work with the control centre using CCTV and other data sources to continually monitor the network in real time, making changes to the timings when necessary. A range of signal timing strategies have been created. They are either implemented by the control room or automatically once a trigger is activated. And a series of strategies have been developed to cater for regular events such as football matches and concerts. And the network is monitored before and after these events. And the strategies are amended as necessary, meaning they evolve to reflect changing travel patterns and priorities. Um, engineers work with the local authorities to prepare signal timing changes in advance of road works. They then monitor and amend the changes to minimise queues and delays. And as well as proactively managing the network, engineers respond to complaints from members of the public, visit the sites, and when, and when required, amend the timings. Importantly, signals can only operate effectively if they are well maintained and if faults are rectified in a timely manner. To ensure this happens, operations technicians work with site engineers and UNEX who hold TFJ's maintenance contract to ensure the swift identification and fixing of faults. Um, so adapting to chains, part one. Um, Engineers undertake preemptive work to manage the, the network and adapt to changes, and a few examples are listed here. Reviews have been carried out of Scoot region maximum cycle times to ensure they are appropriate for, lo for their location. In areas with high pedestrian volumes, this has generally meant decreasing the cycle times. Uh, reviews have been carried out at the timings at standalone pedestrian crossings, and where appropriate, pedestrian wait times have been decreased and Scoot gap out plans set up. Um, Mutz of Manchester City Centre operates on fixed time plans due to predictable traffic flows and as the way people travel around the centre is changing with fewer motorised vehicles and more active travel, assessments have been completed of these plans and this has led to a reduction in cycle times at many sites. Uh, reductions in traffic volumes has allowed the signals along Deansgate, a mile long road running through the city centre, to be run at a reduced 60 second cycles and the offsets have been amended to create better linking for cyclists. Um, signal timing reviews have been completed at sites across Greater Manchester and as we heard earlier in collaboration with Manchester City Council, TFGM won funding from the DFT to make better use of data and technology to improve network efficiency. The funding has been used to trial TRLs, pedestrian scoot at three regions and the scheme will see the green man time being increased in line with pedestrian numbers. Uh, TFGM also worked with other third parties to trial new concepts and technologies with the aim of encouraging innovation. Uh, adapting to change two. Um, Scoot late running bus priority is already operational at 117 sites and further funding has been secured to install it at all appropriate Scoot sites with bus routes running through them. <coughs> this funding will allow bus priority to be set up at mover sites connected to the UTC system and additionally 
to improve reliability, multidisciplinary teams are working with colleagues at, lo at local authorities to identify and mitigate causes of bus delays along their routes. Uh, proactive work has been carried out by TFGM. For example, the LED replacement programme replaced halogen bulbs with low energy and low maintenance LED optics, saving money over the long term due to reduced maintenance and energy cost. And this saw the number of faults pass to UNEX4 significantly. And then on behalf of National Highway, strategies have been developed which amend signal timings following motorway closures. Analysis of their implementation some reductions in vehicle delays and journey time savings. So, futures and uh, future developments in traffic control. This slide will discuss how TFGM will look forward and adapt to the change in needs of Greater Manchester and the policies that govern it. Uh, exits, existing adaptive control. As road networks and the way people use them change, scoop regions need reviewing to ensure they are operating efficiently and are optimised in line with current travel patterns and policies. The need for modification to the physical infrastructure, infrastructure such as scoop loop positions, should be assessed and any improved scoop software capabilities not available when regions were first validated should also be incorporated. The benefits of regions being reviewed needs quantifying and funding sought to ensure all regions are fully optimised. Um, and whilst most sites that could benefit from adaptive control are now controlled by Scoot or Mover, there are still some that aren't. Upgrading these would also mean late running bus priority could be installed and therefore where it can a case will be made for upgrading these sites. Uh, future adaptive control. TFGM will continue to make use of the latest technology and software to ensure that it can cost effectively manage a traffic signal network. However, it recognises there are limits to the improvements that can be made to scoop models and Greater Manchester will require improved methods of traffic control. So, and this slide demonstrates some of the limitations of existing scoop control. Um, a study has been carried out with Google Greenlight utilising their data to assess stops and delays at signals along Upper Brook Street, which is a radio route running into Manchester City Centre. The data was gathered whilst the signals alternatively ran fixed time plans in Scoot. Analysis showed overall fixed time plans resulted in fewer stops and delays to vehicles. Wow. They also ran cycle times equal to or lower than those used by Scoot. The results are largely, are largely due to tidal flows that benefit from rigid linking and backup observations of engineers on site. Upper Brook Street may not be typical of other regions. It is a straight road with predictable and tidal flows. However, the project did demonstrate a weakness of scoop control, that it can only see traffic when it reaches upstream loops and it can struggle in those cases to produce effective linking. The project not only demonstrated the value of utilising a data-led approach to decision making, it also showed the value, the value of engineers spending time and effort observing and understanding traffic networks and their control systems. These, both these elements are important in producing a desirable outcome and both will need to be utilised in the future. Um, so just quickly some future developments. As discussed, reliable comms are integral to effectively managing the signal network, but they're also expensive. However, over the next two years, TFGM will extend its high-speed fibre connectivity and connect over 700 signals to the local fi full fibre network, which is a shared fibre rollout alongside other public sector bodies which will significantly bolster resilience and future-proof sites ahead of the introduction of new technologies. Um, TFGM currently uses a UT, UTCM, UTMC common database to facilitate strategies and to assist in wider network operations. However, it, it plans to improve network managing, but management by implementing an ITS platform which will provide better information by integrating bus, tram and active travel and highway data, make better use of real-time modelling to deliver network improvements and predictive capabilities, and the ITS platform will be an important step forward in moving towards a data-led approach to network management. Current assets need to continue to be, to be maintained effectively and efficiently, a task just as important as installing new assets and one which provides value for money, and TFGM will continue to keep abreast of developments in traffic signal control, trial new concepts and technology and encourage innovation. And it's recognised that there's a skill sources within the industry. So TFGM's re approach to, re re to recruitment has therefore moved to one which seeks to employ graduates and apprentices who then receive training which will allow both them and TFGM to meet the challenges outlined in the presentation. Um, this, I'm very quick on this. This is just summarising it, that improvements to infrastructure are just as important in meeting Greater Manchester's future needs and ambitions. So engineers will be involved in the design, modelling and development of traffic signal schemes which will contribute to the building of the B network by prioritising public transport and active travel. 
Um, cycle at junctions, as we've heard about, which protect cyclists via an external orbital route, have been developed. And sparrow crossings have also been built to allow the creation of joined up safe cycling networks. They use near side signalling to control segregated unidirectional cycle lanes and an adjacent pedestrian crossing and allow cyclists and pedestrians to cross without conflict. And signalised junctions with no or substandard crossing facilities have been identified and a small number have received funding to rectify this. Cost estimates have been produced to upgrade the remaining sites and will allow a case to be made for funding. Right, second to last slide. Effectiveness of traffic control. On Tuesday the 4th of April 2023, IT problems caused the UTC system to lose comms to all sites during both peaks, meaning signals were left running local timings and, and that none were running scoop. Subsequent analysis of the journey time data showed that the average travel time to travel a mile increased by 13% in the AM peak and 12% in the PM peak. When average trip lengths and estimates of the number of vehicles using the network were analysed, it was calculated that the cost of the lost time to travellers was approximately £150,000. The loss of connectivity took place during the school holidays when traffic flows were lower and the analysis only considers vehicle delay. It does not take account the loss of benefit to bus operators and their passengers of scoop bus priority not being active. Additionally, signal timings could not be amended for events happening that day. Interventions could not be made by engineers working with the control centre. There was no reporting of faults. None of this was captured by the analysis. Uh, the loss of UTC comms provides evidence of some of the benefits that well-managed and funded traffic control systems provide to cities. Amongst other things, they have a role in reducing congestion, improving journey times for public transport and contributing to improvements in air quality. Whilst benchmarking different cities is difficult, th this analysis shows the value of traffic control systems in, in ensuring that they run as effectively as possible. It demonstrates that they are an important part of the infrastructure that can contribute to Greater Manchester's future. And then finally, conclusions. So, as Greater Manchester has developed and as technology has advanced, there has been an increase in the number of traffic signals and in the complexity of the signal network. There has also been an evolution in policies for those which aim to expedite the movement of traffic to those which consider the needs of all road users. We have seen that effective traffic control systems have allowed Greater Manchester to meet these challenges benefiting the region. However, these systems must continue to adapt to the changing world alongside, alongside the organisations using them to ensure they contribute to a future in which Greater Manchester achieves its ambitions. And then just references for the images. Any questions? Thanks very much indeed. Thank you. <clears throat> That was a very quick history of, of, um, of Manchester and what you've achieved, so that was uh, a, good, a good presentation. Thank Thanks. you. Apart from the slides at the beginning when I forgot about me clicking. <laughs> oh, not to worry. Any questions for Chris? I certainly have one, because I, I see that you use the, the data that's coming in as a, a mechanism to identify problems, solve them, go out. And, and check them. To what extent are you developing the data to be an automatic assessment platform? So you use the data to you know, compare before and after and isolate comp you know, the, the um, third party um, changes that are taking place when you say put in Glosser or you put in um, AI, other things changing. I mean, are you using the data to, to work out a true impact of those? Uh, not as, uh, as part of a proper evaluation. It's more be using it like the control room, for example, will be able to have data that's coming in that will, if they see journey times going up part of the region, and they'll be able to flag that up and, and then someone investigate what, what's happening. Mm. Um, I, mean, I mentioned before about um, bus franchising coming in just over a week's time. Um, well, I can't imagine we wouldn't be making use of because TFGM will, the AVL system which tracks the buses, TFGM will have their own system tracking all the buses going around Greater Manchester. I imagine that will become important in the future yeah. that we'll be using that to see where buses are getting delayed and where there's issues. Um, yeah, because I think, that just personally, um, I think the data that you're getting from all these systems are being very valuable to identify problems and solve them, make and design. And there's a lot more potential for using them to automatically get metrics, 
you know, to present, to say that this has had this impact, not just in the corridors where you're doing things, but the disbenefits that it might be causing on the side roads as well. Well, thanks very much indeed. Cheers. Thank you.